Hello, let's talk about combining means and variances. Before we get started today, let's do a little bit of a warm up here. For each 1 million tickets sold, the original New York lottery awarded one $50,000 prize, nine $5,000 prizes, 90 $500 prizes, and $950 prizes. So basically, we're saying for each um, 1 million total. Uh, 1 million tickets sold, um, there were, if you figure it out, 999,000 tickets that didn't win anything. All right, and so I want to describe the possible winnings in terms of a random variable and calculated the expected value of a single ticket. So remember, a random variable is a numerical variable that can be the result of chance. Um, so in this case, if we say let x equal the possible prize value of a single ticket, that should work. Okay, um, the prize value is going to be a money value. It's a numerical variable, and it is the result of chance. We don't know which prize we're going to get um, because this is a lottery. All right, so x, I'm going to define that. Let x equal the possible prize value of a single ticket. And we could write this as a probability distribution. So our possible x values are 50,000, 5,000, 500, 50, and also the zero, which isn't mentioned, but we do know there's a lot of people that didn't win. As far as the probabilities go, um, there's a one out of one million chance, one out of the one million that gets the $50,000, nine out of the, and I wrote shorthand here, one M, just because I didn't want to write all these zeros again, um, nine out of one million chance of getting 5,000, 90 out of one million um, to get 500, 900 out of one million to get five uh, to get 50, and the other 999,000 out of 1 million. That is our zero. All right, so to find the expected value, remember expected value is code in a probability distribution for the mean of x. What's the mean of x? Okay, so one thing we know is that this number is not going to be very high because even though we do have some very high numbers, almost all of them are zero. Okay, so this is going to be the tipping point is probably um, going to be down here somewhere. This is um, likely a very skewed distribution. All right, and so our formula for mean says the sum of every x times its p of x. So what that means is we're going to take each x value times the probability of getting that value. Okay, so I wrote these out. So that's 50,000 times its probability 1 over 1 million. 5,000 times its probability, 9 over 1 million, 500 times 90 over 1 million, plus 50 over times 900 over 1 million, times 0, etc. Okay, so each one times its probability, and we end up with 0 0.185, 0 0.185, so that's the expected value of x, or the mean. And so what that means is basically a typical amount that you earn per ticket um, is about 19 cents. Okay, so every time you play the lottery, you're looking to earn about 19 cents per ticket by playing this lottery. So the ticket sold for 50 cents each. So how much could the state of New York expect to earn for every million tickets sold? Now remember, this isn't a 19 cents that they win. That's a 19 cents that they pay per ticket. So the state profit on one ticket is actually the 50 cents that they earn for the ticket minus the 0.185. So we're looking at about 31.5 cents per ticket they're expecting to earn. So for a million tickets, we would expect to earn about uh, $315,000 in profit. All right, so for every 1 million tickets, they think this is about what they're going to earn. And you can actually check that. Um, I know that for they're going to sell 1 million tickets at 50 cents each. That gives me $50,000 or $500,000 minus the $50,000 prize, minus nine $5,000 prizes, $9,500 prizes, and $950 prizes. And that gives us that same 315. dollars All right, so just a reminder, this expected value of probability distribution, this is basically the typical amount earned per ticket. And the idea is that it, since this is probability distribution, we're talking about a long-run probability. If we were to do this over and over and over and over and over again over many lottery tickets and many um, uh, examples, we would expect that the average amount earned um, would approach that 0.185. All right, so today we're going to be talking about independent random variables and we're going to talk about what happens when you um, transform them. And again, we've talked about this before. So since we're talking about random variables, remember we are talking about um, numerical variables. So that means that our socks apply. Uh, when you go to talk about a numerical variable, you want to talk about shape, outlier, center spread. And for uh, random variables and probability distributions, we're very interested in center and spread and shape especially. So remember that when we're talking about 
center. Center in terms of this is either median or mean. And so a probability distribution, we're usually going to use the mean. We have a formula for that. And this gives us our expected value for the probability distribution. So remember that we're talking about centers. If you've got your data set, okay, that means have a tendency to behave. So if we're talking about a linear transformation, meaning that you could be multiplying the numbers by something or adding something to the numbers or a combination of both, both, the means tend to behave. For example, let's say I have a data set, negative 1, 2, 3, 7. A transformation could be like doubling every value, or adding 9 to every value, or doubling and then adding 9 to every value. All right, so if I take those, what I notice is that the means tend to behave. Um, when I have the mean, original mean, uh, one plus, or negative 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 7 divided by 4, that's 2.75. When I double all the x values, the mean I get is 5.5, which is twice as much as the original mean. When I add 9 to all the x values and add them up and divide by 4, I get 11.75. That's 9 more than the original mean. Um, when I double all the x values and add 9 to them and find the mean, that's the same as doubling the mean and adding 9 as well. So the mean behaves. Um, we end up with whatever happened with our uh, data set, whatever happened that transformation, the mean does the same thing. Okay, now standard deviations can be a little bit sneakier. All right, so remember standard deviation is a measure of spread. It's a typical distance that our observation um, is different from the mean value. So if you perform a linear transformation, you're talking about a term of spread. So imagine, again, I've got my data values here. Okay, not everything is going to change those. If I spread them out, the spread changes. If I condense them, the spread changes. But if I just add or subtract, it just moves them around and it doesn't really change the spread at all. Okay, so what we tend to notice here is that for standard deviation, only multipliers tend to affect the value of standard deviation. Um, the original standard deviation value, which I got in my calculator using the one variable statistics, was 2.86. Um, so you'll notice that the mean of 2x, when we found the standard deviation of this, it is twice as much as the original mean. So if I double all of my data values, I also double the spread as well. Um, however, when I just added 9, if I take my data values and I just go up 9 spaces, those that doesn't change the spread, that just changes the position. So that plus 9 didn't affect this. Um, same thing, I noticed that the 2x plus 9 is the same as the 2x. So again, the 2, the multiplier affected the mean, or sorry, affected the standard deviation, but the plus 9 did not. Okay, so again, move my little face again. Um, when we're talking about standard deviation, only multipliers affect standard deviation, so that plus 9 um, is just a shift, and that's not going to change spread at all. Okay, one last thing to remember about the SOCs in terms of random variables. Um, and so this is uh, from the College Board. This is part of their formal definitions and things. So it says, for y equals a plus bx, the probability distribution of the transformed variable y has the same shape as the probability distribution for x, as long as a and b are greater than 0. The mean of y is the same as the transformed uh, effect, and the standard deviation of y is just going to be multiplier on there as well. So basically what you need to know about shape is that the linear transformations, if you're just multiplying and adding by some constant, those are not going to change the shape of the probability distribution. If the distribution of x is skewed to the left, then the distribution of 2x will be skewed to the left, and the distribution of x plus 3 is skewed to the left. Okay, so any distribution, the shape of it is going to be unchanged by any of these linear transformations. All right, so one thing you need to be able to do um, is to go through an example and actually find means of transformed data. So for example, suppose the amount of propane needed to fill a customer's tank is a random variable with a mean of 318 gallons and a standard deviation of 42 gallons. Hank is considering two pricing plans for propane. Plan A would charge $2 per gallon, and Plan B would charge a flat rate of $50 plus $1.80 per gallon. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of the distributions of money earned under each plan. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to define my variable. So if I'm going to use the variable x or use the variable, I, I need to say what that means. So let x be, and I'll go to my problem, the amount of propane needed to fill a customer's tank. A lot of times you can find those variables um, simply by re, re going through the problem prompt. Okay, so I know that from the problem prompt that the mean of x is 318 gallons and the standard deviation is 42 gallons. 
gallons. All right, so plan A says he's going to charge $2 per gallon. Now, what we can think that means then, that's really a transformation, $2 per X, $2 per X, so that is a 2X. And plan B said he's going to charge a flat rate of $50 plus $1.80 per gallon. And again, if X is the amount of gallons, then B is basically 1.8X plus 50. All right, so if I want to find the mean of A, the means behave, all I need to do is take the mean of A is the mean of 2x, so I'm going to take 2 times the mean of x, 2 times $318 is 686, means behave. The standard deviation of A would be the standard deviation of 2x, and since that's a multiplier, that multiplier will affect my standard deviation. That'll be 2 times the standard deviation of x, Okay, that multiplier, that doubling does change the spread, giving me a standard deviation of 84. All right, now if I'm talking about the standard deviation of B, that would be, or sorry, the mean of B means behave. So if the mean of 1.8x plus 50, I'm going to do the same mathematical computation on the mean as I did to the variable. 1.8 times the mean of x plus 50, that's $622.40. And the standard deviation of B would be 1.8x plus 50, Okay, but remember that that plus 50, that's just a shift. That's not going to do anything to the spread. The only thing that's going to affect the spread is that 1.8 times x. So 1.8 times 42 gives me 7560. Now, occasionally you might ask the question something like, um, which of these plans do you think that Hank ought to choose? There's really two kind of arguments you could put here. The first is you could look at the mean. The mean is the expected amount of money that he thinks he's going to earn. So, for example... Um, if he goes for plan A, he's expected to earn $686 on average. And if he goes with plan B, he'll expect to earn $622.40 on average. All right, so you could go with plan A. Um, plan A, you would expect to earn more money on average. That would be a good plan. That's a good defense. More money than plan B. I like to earn more money. More money is good. Now, the other thing you might look for in your um, defense, maybe you decide if you look at the standard deviation. Standard deviation of A is 84, and standard deviation of B is about 76. Now, what that means is that the standard deviation or the spread of values along B, um, those are, are, that's a smaller standard deviation for B. So that's more of a consistent graph. So standard deviation is kind of consistency. Um, we would expect those jobs to be closer on average to that expected value than we would the plan A would be. So maybe you say, I go with plan B. It has a smaller standard deviation. There's more consistency. Frank is a budget man, and he wants to be able to budget really easily, so there's less variation in the values. It makes it easier for him to plan overall. All right, so when we are combining random variables, okay, through addition and subtraction, so we're talking about things like x plus y, x minus y, ax plus by, we've got two different variables. Um, just as a reminder that means behave. If you are going to add two sets of variables together, the means will add. If you're going to subtract, the means will subtract. And if you're going to do some sort of crazy combination of the two, that crazy combination of the two happens to the mean as well. Means behave. Um, standard deviations, however, are a little bit sneakier. So from previous times talking about this, remember we can't just combine standard deviations, but we can combine variances. And how we talked about this earlier in the semester was you can think about standard deviation as a measure of spread. It's kind of a measure of distance. So it does tend to behave more like distance behaves. So for example, if I have a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, um, according to Pythagorean theorem, um, I can find that distance 5 um, on there, but not by using 3 plus 4. 3 plus 4 does not not equal 5. I can't just add the sides together and get that, but what is true is that 3 squared, 9, plus 4 squared, 16, does equal 5 squared, 25. And that's basically how standard deviations behave as well. If I want to find x plus y, I can't take the standard deviation of x plus the standard deviation of y. That's not going to give me the standard deviation of x plus y in the same way that 3 plus 4 will not equal 5. But I can square them and get the squared value. So the square of the standard deviation of x plus the square square of the standard deviation of y is equal to the square of the standard deviation of x plus y. All right, so again, these just act like Pythagorean theorem. And remember that word for squared standard deviation is variance, variance. 
Okay, so what we want to remember is that variances always add, always add. So even if it's x plus y or x minus y, we are always going to combine those. Think about your triangle. If it's flipped the other direction, you don't say it's negative 3 units. Okay, so that they're always going to add x plus y, x minus y. We're going to combine those like a distance. Um, the other really important word here I've got highlighted is independent. It's important that the two variables be independent. That means the probability of the first should not affect the probability distribution of the second. And we talked a little bit about that back in chapter six. All right. So for example, I have um, two data sets, negative one, two, three, and seven, and nine, 10, 11, and 12. And I have found the mean and standard deviation of both of those. And notice variance 8.19, that's just standard deviation squared, and 1.25, that's just standard deviation squared. Okay, so just as a reminder of how this works, when I'm talking about x plus y, if they're independent, that means I'm literally talking about every combination of x plus y. Okay, so since there's four x's and four y's, we're talking about 16 data values. So negative 1 times 9, or negative 1 plus 9, negative 1 plus 10, negative 1 plus 11, negative 1 plus 12, etc. Every possible combination of x plus y. So that gives me this data set right here. And when I do this in my calculator, I get a mean of 13.25 and a standard deviation of 3.07. And again, means behave. If you double check, the mean of these numbers that represent x plus y is 13.25. That's what you get when you add the two original means together, means behave. But the standard deviation does not work. 2.86 plus 1.12 does not make 3.07. So standard deviations don't add. But what does add are the variances. So I'm going to take the standard deviation of x squared, 2.86 squared, plus the standard deviation of y squared, 1.12 squared, and that should give me the standard deviation of x plus y squared, or in other words, the standard deviation of these values of these 16 data values right here. Okay, I do this in my calculator, and I get that the square, so the hypotenuse um, squared is 9.44, and then to take the square root of that number, that will give me that 3.07. Okay, so the variance is 9.04. You can see that the numbers that the calculator gave me are the same the ones that I'm getting for arithmetic here. Okay. All right. Now, if I go for x minus y, again, that's every combination of x minus every combination of y, x minus y. Okay. So I'm going to do negative 10, negative 11, negative 12, negative 13. That's negative 1 minus 9 and negative 1 minus 10, etc. Okay. So if I find the mean, notice the mean is negative 7.75 and the standard deviation was 3.07, which is the same as it was last time. Okay. So again, the means behave. If you notice, the mean of x minus y is the same as the mean of x, 2.75, minus the mean of y, 10.7. So means behave, yay. Standard deviations definitely do not behave. So 2.86 minus 1.12 does not equal 1.74. That does not work. But again, I can combine these, and even though it's subtraction, variances always add. Okay, so I'm going to do the same computation basically that we did last time. Okay, so you can just think of the triangle like flipped in the other direction. Okay, so even though we are subtracting, the variance of those is still going to be 9.44 for the square, and then the standard deviation is 3.07. All right, now again, some crazy combination. Here's 3x plus 2y. That would be 3 times every x plus 2 times every y. I'm still getting 16 combinations. Here they all are. And I notice that the mean behaves, but the standard deviation does not. Okay, so just like before. So if I want to find the mean, I'm just going to take 3 times the mean of x plus 2 times the mean of y, and we're good. But standard deviation, I need to add the variances. Now, I have a lot of things going on here. So the variance of 3x would be 3 times the... Stan sorry, the standard deviation of 3x would be 3 times the standard deviation of x because multipliers do matter when standard deviations are coming along. And 2y would be 2 times the standard deviation of y. So I'm going to take the standard deviation of 3x, or 3 times the standard deviation of x, squared plus the standard deviation of 2y, or 2 times the standard deviation of y squared, and that should equal my crazy combination squared. All right, so I put my numbers in, and I end up with about 78.69 for the square, okay? So I take the square root, and I get the 8.87, okay? All right, so I have a couple of examples left. I'm going to stop the video, and there are several examples, um, which I'm going to put in a separate video. And you're going to want to look at those, because they're very important.